Hey guys, welcome back. So here you can see an assortment of old electronics that were piling up the last few months. And I now have time and I'm in the mood of salvaging components. And for me, uh, it's a bit different to what you typically see on salvaging components if you watch videos. Um, most people are always talking about high valuable components like um, big capacitors, inductors, and stuff like that, transistors. But for me, everything has a value. It's just that I'm not specifically going for it. For example, if I were to remove this uh, microcontroller over here, before this gets removed, smaller components around it will be disordered. So what I typically do is go for specific components and pick up everything that gets disordered uh, along the way. The only things I'm not going for are SMD um, capacitors, resistors, SMD diodes. Diodes in common, I'm only going for diet packages or really big high power diets. Um, I'm going for, um, what are they called? <laughs> I forgot just the name, the um, capacitors. Yeah, capacitors. I'm going for big capacitors. But everything that is this size or bigger is for me big enough to be uh, of value to specifically go for. I'm also going for any size of spools except these really, really tiny spools over here. I'm not going for them specifically. But if I am, um, for, for example, on this board, salvaging this microprocessor, which I will do, I can just move over the heat gun and remove all of these components over here. And what I typically do is remove everything that I think has any value, all these chips, and later on I uh, look up the data sheets and see what I've got. But if you are into microcontrollers and stuff, I would strongly recommend you um, get the data sheets for the uh, chips before you disorder them. It's just that I like to disorder and afterwards sort all the components and see what I've got. So this is a close-up of the board I was talking about. This is the microprocessor I will go for and these are the capacitors I was talking about. I think they are big enough to have enough value. So I typically go for this size of capacitors and the size of spools and the spools I'm not going for are these really small ones and as I said um, SMD capacitors, resistors, diodes, I'm not going for them. The point I try to make is if you are going for a specific component other components around it might be disordered before your um, important component gets disordered, the one you're going for. For example with this power supply on the secondary side, there are transistors over here. And if you try to um, disorder them, all of these capacitors, this other transistor, maybe these uh, connectors and the load resistor, it's really likely that they get disordered before the other two. Especially if you can't remove the heatsink then you have to spend a lot of time heating up this area to remove the components you're going for. And the uh, capacitors, especially capacitors, will most of the time just fall off of the PCB. So why don't you keep them? I totally forgot to film my explanation on how I remove components. So the way I do it is with a heat gun and I highly recommend you do it also with a heat gun. A cheap one will do fine. You need one with two settings, a 300 degree Celsius setting and a 450 or 500 degree Celsius setting. And the reason for that is rather simple. It saves you quite a bit of time. You start by applying the 500 degree setting uh, and move your heat gun all over the PCB for approximately 30 seconds. Then flip around to the other side and do the same thing. So you have to preheat both sides with 500 degree or a 
similar high setting but not above 500 degrees Celsius. This could otherwise damage components and you have to constantly move the heat gun. This will, as I said, preheat the PCB and everything will be faster and just not as time consuming. After 30 seconds of preheating both sides, go to the 300 degrees setting and then just apply the heat either directly to the component if it's an SMD component or from the other side if it is a THT component. You can do that either by sitting down and having the PCB elevated by some pieces of wood. This um, is a good idea if the components, for example, a electrolytic capacitor, they can just fall down and remove themselves by their own weight. Or you can just stand up, have the heat gun on the table and just hold the PCB at an angle above the opening of the heat gun and then just use some pliers or some forceps to remove components from the PCB. But you have to be careful not to apply heat too long at one area. What could happen is either you damage the component, electrolytic capacitors, they can blow up and uh, well you can also damage the PCB which is not really interesting but it also starts to release some smoke that is also harmful to your respiratory system. So be careful not to heat the PCB for too long. This is one of the reasons why you should use a mask while disordering components. And these are all the components I decided are worth keeping, except for this pile of microcontrollers and microprocessors. The reason I wanted to show you this pile is just, it, it's a better idea before you start removing them to look them up first. It's not always that you can use them. They are either highly specialized for an application or you can't get the data sheet or the data sheet is not in any language you speak or, I don't know, maybe too old. So look them up first and then decide to remove them. So this pile goes straight into the trash. And what I'm left with are these components. And this is not like I went for all of these components. So as I said, capacitors, electrolytic capacitors, I go for the bigger ones, but the smaller ones, they came loose in the process of desoldering components, so I kept them. Same goes for these SMD capacitors. These are the smallest SMD capacitors I normally go for, but these really small ones, they were also removed in the process of removing bigger components, so I decided to hold on to them. Same goes for the transformers and spools. The smaller spool I normally go for is this size. But this size of spool and the even smaller ones were removed in the process, so I decided to keep them. Because they can get quite expensive. Even if they are really small, they get expensive with the shipment that is involved, so I will keep them. I also removed connectors like the ones for flat cables, so I can use flat cables in the future for future projects or any connector that I think is worth keeping. The LAN connectors are definitely worth keeping. I've got these older USB connectors, I've got DC jack, a small USB connector, 
battery holder, PS2 connector, this uh, terminal that can be separated. Uh, I'm not going to do that now, it's really hard to separate it. A few switches. And I even decided to hold onto these really small switches from the smartphone just because I don't have uh, this kind and maybe it's usable for something, I don't know. I've got the motor that is uh, the reason for your smartphone to vibrate. I've got these diets that I normally wouldn't go for but they were disordered in the process so I decided to keep them because they are relatively big. And here are both SMD and THT um, crystals. I've got the micro SD card holder, SIM card holder, even a small relay. And these are all things that I think I might use in the future for any project. And now comes the part I was really going for, the microcontrollers, microprocessors and RAM modules. So. Unfortunately, there were only these two microprocessors salvageable, um, but I don't have the actual datasheet for them. I still have to search for the datasheet to be able to use them, but I have identified them and I hope I can achieve them to get functional at some point. The most of these chips over here that I will hold on to are are worth keeping like um, DC to DC converter chips and SRAM modules or so static RAM, dynamic RAM modules and the only chip that is not really usable but I decided to hold on to is a NAND chip. So I'm not really into... No, that... No, not NAND chip. That's bullshit. It was a... How's it called? Let me see. So this is the list of chips of all these components except for the um, microprocessors they are over here so these are all the parts and this is how they were called in the data sheet and it was the that is quad double input nor gate this one is normally a chip i don't need but i decided to hold on to maybe i need it in the future and just to show you that even these small chips can have quite a bit of value, I looked them up on the internet and searched for the cheapest price. I didn't find all of these chips, but most of them, and they come to a grand total of 40 euros without shipment. I didn't find all the chips, and there are two chips. I have two of them. I only um, included it one time in this grand total so even these small chips that most people say are not usable they can have quite a bit of value obviously if you're not interested in microprocessors and stuff like that you don't need most of these chips over here and it would be a waste uh, to specifically go for them and remove them from PCB if you're not into microprocessors, microcontrollers and stuff like that. I want to be able at some point to make my own small um, development boards and stuff like that. So that's the reason I'm going for these. And there are a few really good SRAM modules that are quite capable for applications like a oscilloscope. One of them one of these modules, these ASRA modules, was quite usable for this type of application, which is one application I wanted, I want to use a microprocessor for. This is just a small project of mine. Um, that will not happen anytime soon, but especially the chip I'm talking about, this would cost on its own five euros without shipment, so it's definitely worth going for these for me or anyone who is into microprocessors, microcontrollers. And the rest, I mean, the flat cables, most people throw them away. If you keep the connectors, you can use them. And the rest, I think, is self-explanatory. And yeah, just my advice is if you are going for valuable components 
always take a look if others that you don't value as much but you can use for projects take a look at them maybe they get disordered in the process so you can keep them and have a bit more value for the time you spend on salvaging components that's it for today i hope you liked the video and if you did please leave a like comment down below and other than that thanks for watching and see you next time bye